let's look at the properties overwrite and update uh, as part of the AnyCAD uh, importation into uh, Inventor 2017. Here we'll import, uh, let's place a um, Creo model into my assembly here. Just I've just opened up a basic assembly. Um, let's say for example this motor motor part here, open that. This can come into uh, Inventor just as a, a reference model. So I click on OK there. That brings in our Inventor, our Creo model into uh, Inventor 2017. Now prior to 2017, if I was to right click on here, looking at eye properties, take up the eye properties of the project, a lot of these values here, the, these values that existed already were, were um, were not editable, for it. but now we can change these eye properties all the way through. So this is carrying through these eye properties, and they're all editable. So for example, I could change if I change this to being an inventor, inventor motor, and this to being designed by inventor. You can see that these values now as they are here, have been uh, changed to blue, indicating that they've been edited from their original. If I was to right click, let's say on the designer there, I could put that value back to the source. So there, there it would pick up back from metadata from the Creo model. But let me just bet that back to Inventor, like that. Apply that there. Click on the close from there. So we've just adjusted the uh, metadata in the properties. And therefore, to look at that, I can look at the bill of, bill of materials here. If I just enable the bomb view there, bill of materials view there, you can see that descriptions being picked up here for inventor motor now. If I move this, if I change the column here, added a column, let's put in that designer column in here. You can see that it's picking up the inventor as well there. So those are the values, I click on done there, those are the values now that it's picking up from our I properties here which we've edited. You'll notice that within uh, uh, Inventor 2017 now these I properties up here and let's say these custom properties here, it still picks up the custom properties from um, the Creo model or the SolidWorks model, no problem at all. But it becomes editable now. So, with that regard, we could actually, I could actually just save that. If I was just save the assembly at the moment, um, and let's let's just call it a Creo assembly, uh, something like that. Just call it Creo, just so that I can save it. And then, if I opened up, let's say we opened up a new, a new drawing. Let's put a new drawing in here. Put a base object in here. Um, so the base view is going to be my Creo assembly that I've just created here. I'll just pop it in there straightforward. Okay, like that. So we've got a, a simple placement there. If we look at the annotate now, for example, on annotation, uh, if I looked up creating a parts list. I can then select that that there that view there for my parts list selected view OK properties are here bomb view structured I can pop that there you can see now that we've got uh, the item quantity there part number motor and it mentions description there part inventor motor which I've actually changed so. If I then went to um, uh, edit the parts list, uh, we could actually add in a column chooser here. Just put another column in here for the designer. Add that in there. OK that. Apply. OK, so now we've got the inventor properties in here coming on here. So the designer has been changed to inventor description is the inventor motor here. If I come back to my Creo model here, or my Creo assembly in here. Even if I come into my um, project here, if I just pop that back, 
save that back to the source, apply that, close, come back to my drawing over here. It updates all of the features here. So this is the Creo Designer here. So if I actually then, if we did something like a, a leader text, for example, on here, just a bit of leader text, where once we're picking up any of these uh, information, designer information I can say I'm going to pick that up place that in there we've got it's coming up here as well designer here and once again like I said if I come over to my assembly I properties here project and change that to being an inventor apply that close we go back over here and it'll update in our drawing as well this, as I say, this properties overwrite and update works for workflows for SolidWorks, Katia, uh, Creo, um, solid models. In this little demonstration, I'd like to show the display parent child feature relationships within a part. Here I've got a very simple part actually, its structure is very easily defined, it's an extrusion. There's a fillet going on each corner. There's a fillet going around the top edge. There's a hole in it, and that hole has a chamfer. Now, when we look at that part now, it looks very straightforward. However, if we move over onto the hierarchy here in our browser, let's right-click on, let's say, the chamfer. You'll see we've got the, the uh, entry here called Relationships, so left-click on Relationships. This will give us a little dialog box up here uh, indicating the relationships. We've got two panes on here and one entry here. The entry is basically the selected object that we've just selected. In our case it was that chamfer right at the bottom. Above it is the parent pane and below it are the children pane. In other words at the top this will list up the features that the feature we're dealing with is dependent upon. In other words, we're dependent upon this hole is dependent on that extrusion. And this chamfer is our selected part. But it's there's nothing dependent upon the chamfer. As you can see, it's the last in the line there. So the chamfer itself is dependent upon the hole and the extrusion. Very clear that is, in that you couldn't I couldn't put a chamfer here if there was no hole, and I couldn't have a hole if there was no extrusion. So that's a simple relationship going on there. Let me just click on done there. But if I move up to say the hole, which is directly above it, and also then looked at the relationships on here. So I click on relationships now. You can see that we've got a slightly different picture in that we've got the parent pane at the top showing a fillet and an extrusion. The selected feature is the whole one that we're working with. That's our selected feature. And it's dependencies, uh, dependent children. In this case, we've got a dependent chamfer. So, of course, the chamfer can't exist without the whole. So, that's clear that that child relationship works. But when we look up here, we've got a fillet here. Now, why would that whole be dependent on that fillet and if we look at that hole you think well that doesn't actually that hole doesn't have any relationship or any bearing to that fillet at all so if we look at this uh, you see that it mentions the fillet 2 here which is the small fillet here if I then come over to the uh, edit feature on here I can actually directly edit that feature of that hole by clicking on here now let's click on the edit feature that brings us up to the edit featuring of, of that particular component. Now why the question we were asking is why are we dependent on that uh, fillet? And the reason is clear now is that it's a linear it's been the hole has been placed in the linear in a linear position. It has two references one and two. These two references one and two here. Now one and two references are actually coming off the edge of the fillet. They're not coming off the edge of the extrusion. They're coming off the edge of the fillet. So that's clearly indicating that that actually is um, 
that fillet, the, the relationship of that fillet has a bearing to the position of that hole. So, for example, if I click on OK there, if I come up to this fillet, this fillet here, right clicked on that fillet and edited that feature, instead of, say, having a 2mm radius there, I changed that to, say, a 5mm radius, like that, clicked on OK there. You would see then that the fillet, because the fillet's got bigger, the relationship of that hole has moved because it was dependent upon that fillet. So if I right clicked on that whole facility, hole again, come onto its relationships, you can see that that's why that fillet is dependent. That's why it's dependent on that fillet. So the hole is dependent on everything that's above it. Everything that's below it is dependent on that hole. I think that's an extremely useful feature to have when you get much more complex uh, geometry going on in your part than we have there now. On this little modeling exercise here, I'm going to look at boundary patch with guide rail. So what we're going to do is create a little canopy for this um, fuselage here. So if I create a, a, a sketch, a, just a 2D sketch, this is going to form our uh, guide rail plane. So I'll put a sketch on the YZ plane here. If we come over to my project edges here, let's project cut edges. For those cut edges, I'm going to select this one, this one, this one. And uh, while we're on this uh, sketch plane here, let's click on spline. Let's create an interpolation spline to give us our guide rail. So there to there. It would be a good idea to smooth these two together. So, of course, we'll use G2 smooth here. So that's that one there to there. And then I'll finish the sketch. So we have now the loops ready here for the bottom edge of our canopy and the guide rail here for the top edge of the canopy. So under on the surface menu here, let's click on patch. You can see that it's asking for the boundary loop here. So if we select this one, this one representing our boundary loop here, click on guard rail, guide rail. And that will give us our guide rail there. Click on OK there. This gives us a nice canopy for our, our glider fuselage here. If I just right click on here and uncheck uh, translucent, you see a better option there. OK, let's have a look at uh, cross, cross referencing in assemblies. And so just started up an assembly here but uh, nothing's in it at the moment so let's place a uh, couple of components into the assembly just uh, to see a simple assembly together so I'll click on open the uh, base part there for example pop that in there okay and I'm also going to place this object here which is a very just a, a rectangle there object with a hole in I'll place that in the scene as well OK there. And just to have a little bit of a constraint going on, let me just constrain this face. Mate it to that face there. And then perhaps I'll do a flush constraint from there to there with a bit of an offset, let's say 20 or something like that. Yeah, that would be good. And then uh, another one set like this way. Um, that's a 50 there. So finish that. Now, if I save that, um, save that assembly, save as, and uh, I'll just call that uh, references, reference, save that. So there, basically, like I say, a very simple assembly going on there. So what I would like us to do is look at the relationships between the how these reference in each other now, or how we can view that the way they reference each other. So, for example, on this particular um, uh, assembly now, I could right click on here and um, edit that part. So, I'm going to just edit the base part here. 
and all I want to do actually on the base part is perhaps just create a simple sketch over here on that top surface and using our project geometry feature here I just say project that hole there or indeed that part as well if I wished but essentially the as much as we can project whatever we like here so I'll finish that sketch so there's a sketch on there so what I could do now finish that there and you can see that on that sketch here we actually have a reference planes that's referencing the cross referencing that top component so it, whilst I'm in my assembly I can actually right click and then open the reference and there we go that will open that reference so I, I have a I have an intrinsic link between those two there which is very good so if I then if we actually opened up if I opened up the base that was very simple base like this um, I actually closed that reference and save changes to the oh, yes to all okay so I've got now the this is the uh, sketch on the base so we will, can look the other way as well so I'm going from the part here I can actually then go from this part look at these these are the references here right click on one of those references and then I could open the parent assembly from there so basically we got both ways there we can actually reference back from an assembly to a part and a part back up to an assembly.